welcome to episode 106 ish six ish seven ish six ish somewhere in the one o's would be this episode Yippee. i am your host my name is tim with me today uh we're gonna start up north uh he is the king of moncton uh he is no longer king of the north um why not i don't know because i'm gonna go queen of the north or something i don't know wow it's kind of mean Cut. That's, we have yeah. a king wow, now Tim, and you're, not a queen so. you're spicy now homie what's going on all right king of the north calvin lock lock a damn straight and down south because he is I south technically am south of you by a mile Technically, you are south of me. Uh, the Coastal Crusader, he is the king of the south, Mr. Brian Athern. Yeah, hold on. Oh, got something in my back here. Oh, oh, what is it? Oh, 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 hey, what's going on here? Oh, look, and oh. He's, got, he's got his friendly right. pussy cat with him. Why is That's there right. a cat in your back? That's because she likes to sit in the small of my back in the computer chair for warmth. Oh, Tim so understands cute. how it is. I do. She's cute. She's tiny. She is. She's she a kitten. Nice. She's only about sixteen weeks old. Oh, look at her! Oh, and she's gone. Old. Yeah, it's gone. Her sister's around here somewhere. Oh, they're on the bed. Yeah, they're both are now. So we don't really have a whole lot to talk about this week because not oh, a whole lot going on. No, nothing happened. No. Nothing yeah. Happened. No. 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 Let's talk sports. So I really hope. Uh, I, I, bowl last week? I, I really hope that people can hear Calvin because I'm struggling to hear Calvin again. Can you hear me? It's a little low on my end. It's, yeah, it's low. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay, it must be. It's muscling up against my sweater. Hold on, ladies. Don't lose your shirts. Hey, oh. hey, hey we had a grievance on. about this. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to cause any more problems <laughs> for the world for next year. Keep your shirt on, Calvin. Yeah, so, keep my shirt on. <laughs> Is that better? I'm just trying to make it so it doesn't rustle up against... No, it, I can hear shirt. you better, but honestly, yeah. you were you were muffled. Um, I also <laughs> barely have a voice. It could be what it is, too. No, it's... T- it, I mean, my, today is the first day I've finally got a little bit of a voice back, uh, which is great. I know a lot of people are super sick. Yeah, there's some sicknesses. Yeah. Uh, As, hey, we were all in the same building for... At least, thank God, that it was warm out. Most of us went outside a lot. It was very warm last week, bowling. It was. It, oh, was, it was very so hot outside. Holy smokes. Yeah. Outside. Um, you know what I've first, noticed? Bowling alleys never have windows. Never have what? Windows. Well, they're like a casino. They don't want you to see what it's like outside. They want you to stay inside. Yeah. There's windows there. Not really. Yeah, no, on the sides. There's windows out in the back, out in the back area. It's always so bright on the sides, even though the lanes aren't on. <laughs> um, first things first, I do want to uh, thank all of those that reached out to. Uh, I'm going to speak on behalf of Calvin and Brian, and they didn't realize I was going to do this. Uh, all of those that reached out to us for our for our episodes, the last couple of uh, uh, episodes where we focused a little bit on mental health. Um, I, I I appreciate the feedback. Um, I appreciate people reaching out and checking in and just um, people I didn't realize that listened to the show that actually listened to the show. Um, so it was it was nice and and I appreciate it. I don't. I don't know how this is going to come out, but I'm going to say it is I don't do this for the accolades. I don't do this for the thanks. And I especially don't talk about my mental health and the struggles that I've gone through for anything other than trying to help people. Um, And that's something that I've only recently started to do uh, because I've, I've hid um, the mental health, uh, mental health aspect of my struggles for many, many years. Um, so it's it's I'm not gonna say it's nice to hear other people struggle because I don't want other people to struggle. Um nice to know you're not alone. Yeah, I, I guess that's the, the, the best way to put it. Um so thank you to all of those that have reached out. We will not be done speaking on that subject. Um 
you know, we will continue uh, periodically checking in on that subject and, and talking about it in between laughter, in between other things. Uh, this week, Definitely though, we got a lot of things to talk about. This week, we can be all barely move. Yeah, I'm a little sore. You know what? I'm pretty good. My hand hurts. Oh, yeah, my finger. I don't know. It's yeah. pretty. It's pretty. Blown. Yeah, that's, that's mine from last week. We all have the giant blown open calluses going on. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of, and I don't know why, because I threw less balls than I think I ever have at Worlds, but. <sighs> um, overall thoughts. Let's, uh, Calvin, I'm going to start with you. Overall thoughts. We're going to start with the Men's Worlds. Uh, which was held last week down at uh, the fantastically run Academy Lanes in Haverhill. So greatly run, so fantastic. Uh, and I awesome and I do job. not say that I do not say that yeah. facetiously at all. No. Uh, I think Teddy, Josh, and the entire staff of Academy Lanes and uh, was it Pub One Twenty Five. Um, yeah. Those bartenders, they work their butts off all week. You we know, got the milk. That's yeah. how. That's how. Yes, it was. you did. I heard the milk. <laughs> it, it it was a um, fantastically run tournament for, and again, I know that we had our internationals here in the states the last two years, but this was the world's. This was the uh, triumphant return of our friends from up north. Uh, this was uh, the big kahuna of bowling, of candlepin bowling. And I thought it was in the perfect place being at Academy Lanes. Um, and again, uh, I I have nothing but positive things to say uh, for Teddy and, and Josh and the way they ran the tournament. Um, it was great to see that big, beautiful trophy back. Even if I was, still can't touch it. Um, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Pinfall was pinfall was cool. normal academy pinfall. Pinfall was fun. It was it was interesting. Sure, that's a good word we'll use. To we were it. we were talking about it, and I said I don't think I've ever seen the seven eight nine with no wood as much as I have. <laughs> it was it, it. I popped just the one three on a pocket hit. Literally just just the one three. I seen the one two three once. Danny Harris plucked out the one two three. I, said, well, I saw the cool. 410 a number of times. I saw the most impressive thing I ever saw, and it was in the match against Tim. Josh Daly rips out the 3-9 and the 2-8 at the exact same time. The full Worcester. Hold on. Hold on. The full Worcester, but he left two, pl- two pins on the plate. Yep. The 2-8 were still on the plate. Did the ball come back and take the two eight, nope, or did a pin, pin take the two eight? Pin. I think the, I think the pin. So I think what happened was he, he blew it through the half Worcester right, and I don't know if it was the three pin or the nine pin that came off the curtain up and over and took out the two eight. Or eight, the eight, the eight, and then eight went two. Into the two. Yeah, yeah. And the eight fell forward into the two. Then and it then was the two nestled right yep. into the head pin. Oh. Yeah. It went from probably four to six on his strike to nine on his strike and a ten yep. box. Um, that was crazy. so, I, Calvin. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start with you on your thoughts on the week itself, um, and then we'll get into actual scores and and whatnot. I mean, logically, I loved it because we got the nice division where we had. You know, our one competition ended up being the champions, of course, but our only competition in that side was the champions of the tournament. So it was, it was really good. Like it was a good week. We did, we barely had to fight for the bye. It was super easy. I... All right. So Brian. So when we <laughs> went into Friday morning, we knew our match was going to be super easy. And we were just like, ah, oh, we just take eight off the first team. And then we take six off the next one, and we got the buy. It's pretty simple. And that's, you know, the story writes itself. Son of a 
I we can't some, say anything. I was in the other division. We had some bald old guy and a bunch of kids, and it wasn't too hard. That bald, that bald old guy hurts today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he looked yeah. like he looked like he hurt that match too because it wasn't pleasant to watch. Did I even bowl that match? Yeah, you bowled the second and third string when you guys were already down a hundred. Okay, so I and didn't the start third, the third string. You almost won, but yeah, it was uh, tough. It was all right. No, fair it enough. Was a good week. No, it was a good week. Um, I found, of course, pinfall was. <sighs> Sometimes you're on a roll. Like I think, I think there was. Then 190 something. And then maybe like a couple 180s. I looked I looked one at one time because we were trying to figure out how our averages were looking for the week as a team. And there was Gwena or Sam who had the 192 and the 400 or something like that. And then from his average to the next closest 400, there was 35 bowlers. So there was 35 bowlers who were higher than a guy who had a 400 and did not have a 400 the entire week. Wow. So it was, it was just, you could tell that the pinfall was rough. You could tell that, you know, when you got a break, you were excited. And sometime halfway through the string, if I was punching, 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 I'd be aiming at the two or three pin every time to kind of get something flying around because the pins were falling off the two or three pocket. It was, they were working a little bit more off of that. So, you know, it was good. Unfortunately, ran into a really firehouse of a team <laughs> on Saturday. They came out the first string. Well, the first string was pretty close until the last couple boxes when Justin threw a double, uh, Justin Waters and, uh, they threw a couple marks, and Jeremy Seaholm to finish with two marks it made it kind of a little bit more distant. And then uh, the second string, when they started out, sixteen out of twenty marks <laughs> with ouch with two sets of doubles, Ooh. and I think there was spare. So it's eight. really eighteen out of twenty at that point. Well, yes, at that point. So it was just. They just cruised, made it close in the end, but yeah. So overall, it was a good week. I enjoyed it. I don't have any complaints. Food was incredible. Service was incredible, except for the one guy who keeps taking my food every time it was left there. So other than that, it was great. <laughs> Had some fun on Thursday, but we'll get into that here. and We'll get into that shortly. Yeah, yeah. we'll get into that yeah. a little bit. Brian, you're uh, get spicy. Get uh, get I was on the left side, too. so I have a different thought. Uh, I'm much like Calvin in that, man, I threw a good ball on the head pin, but unfortunately, damn, was it super full on that head pin for a lot of the time. Uh, I left a lot of splits. I was very full. But the left side was very tough. Uh, pinfall was considerably lower on that side. Um, it, was an, it, it was an interesting week in the fact that it was hard to get two or three going together in a row. You really had to have the one out of two mentality because it was hard to get two or three marks in a row on that side. And the breaks where you could throw uh, a ball on the head pin the one time and the same ball the next time was a different break. So um, the pinfall was very honest. I'll give it that. Uh, top-notch facility, though, uh, like Tim said, um, they did an amazing job hosting. Uh, Teddy and Josh and everybody involved. The food was amazing. The service was great. It was just a great place to have the Worlds after three years of not really having it. And I just thought that it was a matter of picking pins. Um, that's what I think it came down yeah, to a lot. Very much so. In this very tournament, so. more so than ever, was nines and ten boxes. Because I'll tell you what, at least on the left side, I saw a lot of six and seven boxes. And it wasn't from fault, not fault of people hitting pins. It was just everything seemed to go up and over on the left side. I don't know what it was like on the right side, but everything seemed to go up and over if you were even marginally full. Um, I, 
I only bowled on the left side in the in that first playoff match. Mm-hmm. And it was different, I mean, I bowled, but not to say bad. No, no. I bowled I bowled well for the most part. Um I, <laughs> Well, you're better was, than me, Tim. So. No, 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 no. I didn't. It, it's that's not what I'm talking about. I'm trying to equate the three strings I bowled on the left to the twenty plus that I bowled on the right, and the right did have significantly higher pinfall. But I think if I'm if I'm not mistaken, it was that way the last time it was at Academy as well. The, the right three side. years it's been an academy and I bowled there. I've never bowled on the right. Um, hold hold on one second. The laundry seems to be banging. Oh, oh, Tim, okay. uh, it's the laundry wardrobes. Yeah, where's where's Angie? Isn't Angie supposed to get on that? Usually we have the buzzer that goes off and talks about the laundry. Right. Isn't it, isn't it Angie's job to get the laundry? What's going on? Oh, I just had to shut the door to the... Oh, oh you didn't fix it. Oh, okay. you, just, you, just you didn't fix it. You just no, it's still yeah, going. That's oh, the tip. Okay. Yeah, that's the tip. Okay. Yeah, don't now need to fix understand. it. No, no, we got it now. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, so I'm trying to equate the... Again, only bowling three strings on the left side. Um, I, I... I changed just a slight changed to the way I was throwing the ball on the left just to get a little more snap on it. Um, because I knew I only had three strings and then I'll come back the next day. So hopefully, which didn't happen that way, but <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Overall, I, 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 I thought the, this was a tougher than normal week for me. Um, a little more pain than I'm normally used to. Uh, made things a little tougher, but on the on the other hand, it actually made me focus a little more when I was bowling. So I don't know if I bowled. I don't know if I bowled better or worse. I bowled better than I than I anticipated I was going to bowl. Uh, you know, I made a post on Facebook that, you know, 30 years ago, I made my first appearance in the in the worlds and made the top 10 an average. 30 years later, uh, in my 30th appearance, I made the top 10 an average in our division again. So difference is I was 132 30 years ago in average, and it was 9th or 10th. This year, I was 121.9, and it was 9th or 10th. So... Do you think that's a that's a talent issue, or do you think it's a pinfall issue? Pinfall. I think I think it's a pinfall issue. Yeah, pinfall. I was I was to- to- totally line. pinfall. Yeah. Um, that same of year talent here that would probably yeah. average just as much as the other the other guys. Yeah. Just... Yeah. No, there was deeper talent thirty years ago, meaning more teams had more guys that would average but more people bowl too. Right. There was more bowlers. There was more more whatever um the difference is you know that same year that i finished 30 years ago i bowled 667 in the singles and qualified 31st so you know what was the what was a qualifier for monday six six oh two six oh two six oh two uh God, jason gothier jr was the cut at six oh three and I've seen I've seen the cut as low as I want to say at one year it was like five ninety something. I think it was below six hundred once or twice. Yeah. Again, it's not a talent issue. There is a ton of good bowlers out there that can average mm-hmm. one twenty plus. Absolutely. Um, but. That's not going to happen these days unless, you know, your your pin decks have to be cleaned and I'm not going to say juiced up. Basically every day. Yeah. Which is what they did back then. 
Yeah. Every morning you came in, the pins were gone from the deck and the decks were cleaned and and whatever they put on the plates, whether it was lane conditioner or whatever they used, the decks were done. Why do you think that doesn't happen anymore? Just I, I'm not saying it should. I'm not saying, oh, God, it's, it's a terrible tragedy. It doesn't happen, but just Crap, probably too expensive. Yeah, that's a big one. It's the expense behind it. OK, um, I'm I, not trying to. Like no. all out alley owners or anything. Nope. I'm just saying, I, like you know, I think the biggest the biggest thing is the expense behind it because 30 years ago it was inex relatively inexpensive to get a five gallon bucket of lane conditioner, and you would fill up a spray bottle, and that's what you would do your approach. That's uh, your decks with. That five gallon bucket would last you several months, and then you'd get another one. Now. It's you take lane conditioner and it's 10 times plus more expensive. I don't, I don't begrudge the, the owners for. I'm not uh, either. I'm not trying to nope. say I was either. No, no, no. I don't, I, I don't think anyone took it that way. I'm just saying that that's what I, that's what I've seen. Um, you have some places that just don't care. I'm not going to call any names out, but. We all know those houses. They don't care. They'll never do the plates. They're never going to do the plates. They don't care. Some of them take pride in not doing their plates. Well, that's fine. You know. Um, but again, as far as this as far as this past week goes, um, I was just happy to be all together again. Um, yeah, it was it was great very to see much. everybody. You know, match wise, it was. Uh, a grind. It was more more so than normal. It seems like. Um, I don't know why. I I don't know. Um, I will give a shout out to you know Bob Lee and Paul Grant and whomever else they had helping them. Um, you know I I think what they're doing or what they're attempting to do by building the Candlepin Bowling Network is admirable and very difficult. And I appreciate the fact that they were there every day. Yes, uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish they I wish they had been able to have a couple of uh, lanes, you know, maybe one on the right, one on the left. Uh, having them doll down on one end you only get to see you know those 12 teams yeah uh, it's because the wi-fi wouldn't reach yeah yep yep which is unfortunate yep um so how about uh calvin you've got our you've got our picks there and then we'll go into some of the matches and uh first i actually first i do want to congratulate academy lanes the yes, team itself absolutely, absolutely. uh they uh Beat the crap no one out of everybody i don't i don't care who you are if you tell me that they were your pick you'd be lying and that's to say nothing about how good a bowlers they are because i know most of those guys and they're all really good bowlers and and they showed up when it oh counted. man did they did they ever um absolutely i think they had Probably the three highest, most of the three highest series of the whole tournament, and they had them in the playoffs. Like, they just that 171 eight. that Danny Harris threw in the first round of the championship matches. That's super clutch. Like, I mean, Danny, Danny that was a machine, that match, honestly. Yeah, he was a machine. He led, he led the right side in, in average, beating some dumbass from Canada. Some bum, yeah, some yeah. bum, some who knows. Suck well, I wanted Friday. the tournament to end after Wednesday. I wanted it to end after Thursday. Because well, Billy Bloom wanted it to end after Tuesday. No, he, he didn't have enough strings. He, has, <laughs> he had, he had a third of the strings that were bold. No, he didn't. No, he no, had he a didn't. sixth. He didn't. And ninth. Oh, ninth. And ninth. Yeah. You know, um, Danny was, damn, he was on fire all week. He, he bowled great all week. He crushed um, us. Bold every both, both matches. Bold every string, didn't he? Except for one. He had 32. 
Oh, okay. Took one. He, pr- hey. he probably took- he probably went in. To be honest, he probably probably pulled, yeah. he probably pulled thirty two point eight string. <laughs> um, one fifty nine high single for him. Four twenty seven high triple, and a one twenty six point eight. Yeah, in the round robin, one twenty six point eight average. He bowled he bowled fantastic. But you take Danny, you know Norcross bowled bowled really well for them. Justin uh, Waters. Justin Waters bowled great. It's I. I kind of Justin and I kind of chuckled at one point because he had a couple of strings where he, they were bowling right next to us, and and I looked over, I said, "Jesus, Justin," because he went like strike, split, split, strike, strike, split, strike, split, split, strike. Like it was either a split or a strike in this like one or two string stretch, and we just kind of laughed about it. But uh, you know, he bowled he bowled great. Um, Jeremy Seaholm bowled very steady and incredible all week. Yeah, Seaholm see home was good. Um and um drawing a why oh my goodness, I drawing a blank. Corey Packard bowled really oh, well. Well Corey's old I can say that Corey's old because he's older than me. <laughs> you know, he's old. Well, he was uh, the oldest guy on the team. That's Gregory. Well, Mark Gregory was the oldest guy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. How many championships is that for Gregory now? Just two or more? Two, I think. Well, he won one with Academy last time. They no, won. three then. I think okay. he had one before them, I thought. Maybe. Okay, I didn't know. Uh, no, is he bowled in every one of them? Oh. No idea. Oh. Um, oh, Sean Taylor. That's who I was, that's who I was trying to think mm-hmm. of. Um, and Jordan no. Britton. Yeah, well, um, I mean, Jordan... Jordan didn't bowl much in the in the round robin. Uh, matter of fact, I think Calvin would. We were talking before you would mention that they pretty much went with a five ga- five man rotation for the most part for the entire week. Um, unlike Justin, the Dugays Justin who and, who Justin had to. And friggin' uh, Danny Harris were four or five all week. I think I don't think anybody was there any other time. Nope. No, I don't think so. Nick bowled first most of the week. Um, the Dugays yeah. did uh, Avon Valley Lane. Uh, they unfortunately, unfortunately had, had to bowl with five. Bowl with five all week long, and they all but bowled the singles. They got the guy. They got the guy who got the high single of the week. So, and yes. probably a low single, but still, he got the high single. That's all that matters. Yep. Uh, so. High single on the right side. We'll do the right side stuff first. So high average, uh, Danny Harris. And uh, I did not pick Danny to have the high. Uh, I don't think any of us did. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, let's see. High single was Sam Duguay, uh, 192. Had I, I will say, uh, what did I say the high single was going to be, Calvin? 191. Okay, then. And you guys all thought I was crazy? I didn't. I said 186. I was pretty close. Brian, what'd you say? I was 170. 178. High triple on the right side. Danny Harris with its 427. Calvin, oh, I didn't realize you just missed that. I did. So you just missed high average and... High triple. No, sir. I won high triple. Danny Harris can have both. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I won high All right. triple. All right. I'll, 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 I'll give you that. Yeah. D I F T. Oh, yeah. High team game went to the outlaw. No, it didn't. But- Those stats are wrong. Oh, they are. Cause yeah, because we didn't have the six. It says six ninety, and nineteen thirty nine or something like that. That wasn't you. No, we never touched that. We weren't even close. I don't know what happened there. Oh, well, I guess can I can't talk out. about that then, because no. I have no idea who. Yeah, none of us can figure it out because we weren't even close. I think our high was like six forty six or something like that. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. So, because it so never, will... was never even announced. Who had it the? Never... Who had the? Who was the oldest person with the highest average? We'll go you, probably, I assume. No. Yep. (laughs) 
you're not i'm sure you're not the oldest of the tournament but you were the no. oldest of let's say 50 plus who had the high average of the 50 plus yes i know i just looked down through the top 10 on both sides uh bob wickham was number seven on the other side but he was 121.57 and I was number nine on our side at 121.90. Good job, bud. Crushed it. Crushed I it. I would like to guys. see. Uh, there's a few things I'd love to see in the world. Sammy. I'd love to see an all-left-handed team. That would be fun. I would like to see a match between the, uh, the seven oldest guys against the seven youngest guys. Just we can see make that happen. Be. I'm sure we can make that happen. Well... Are you talking the seven oldest guys that are still bowling or the seven oldest guys that are on the roster? Seven oldest guys are still on the rosters. That the young, the young guys would win. Why? Because have you seen the rosters to see who the old guys are? Well, you're one. Uh, you'd still have Holbrook. I'm not in the, I'm not in the top 10 for, for age. I said top seven. I know. I'm not even in the top 10 for age. Oh, well, then you're not bowling, so what's it matter? <laughs> uh, let's see. On the left side, high average. Oh, and he was also high average for the tournament. Matty Bum with a 127.39. He's Matty Bun. I, won, I wonder who chose him to be high average for the tournament, Calvin. Uh, Gim Dodaro, uh, that asshole. Tim did. Okay, just wanted to see that if that was there. Yeah. Did you uh, want to know what the average you picked too, considering you didn't want to flaunt that. Yeah, what was the average I picked? Yeah, one twenty-seven point three. <laughs> and what was it again? Yeah, one twenty-seven point three nine. We get it, Tim. <laughs> we get it, Tim. You got lucky once. Twice, because I said the high single was going to be one ninety-one, and it was one ninety-two. Oh, well, I know, but you got lucky once in your picks, like one time, all together. Oh, you got lucky. Okay. Because I remember last year's picks, and it was not even close. I don't remember last year's <laughs> picks. None uh, of them close on last year's picks. So that means the high individual game went to a young gun. Uh, Charlie Collins with a 166 had the high single on that side. And the high triple cannot go to Maddie with a 446 because he won the high average. So that would mean the high triple on that side went to uh, some other random dude off the street, Jeff Surratt. I don't know if anyone's nice. heard of him. Yeah, the bum. Yep, he's a bum. Uh, Four twenty. <laughs> I beat Jeff Surratt. Yes, <laughs> better than Jeff. Hashtag. Uh, lucky strike uh, in the regular standing absolutely went. I'm saying it fucking ballistic. Yeah. 84 and four. They lost. Is that the two. best record ever? No. no. 86 and two was the best. 86 and two, I think. Um, Nobody's gone undefeated. I was, ta- I was talking to them. Th- I was talking to every one of them Thursday morning. I said, I hope you guys go undefeated. I hope you go eight. No, in the, in the semis when you beat it. I hope you guys are up like 70 pins going to the last string and you lose by 72 just to be, <laughs> Oh just to, so just the New England Patriots, uh, the New just England Patriots rush season, which went undefeated, team. lost the Super Bowl. That, yep. That style. Yep. But they did go eighteen and zero, which is much better than the Miami Dolphins seventeen and zero. Still didn't have that trophy though at the end. I, I'm just saying, I didn't say anything about the trophy. Um. But yes, congratulations to Lucky Strike. That was a, an incredible week. Oh yeah. Just demolished everybody. And especially, um, especially at the start of the week when everybody said that was the harder division for them to go 84 and four is. Yeah. Well, I think, I think if you, if you look at on paper. Oh, I, I know my opinion. I'm just saying what everybody said was. Yeah. Congrats on the easier division. And I'm saying, no, the harder teams were on the left side but the harder division was on the right side because on the left side you had maria's a plus and lucky strike and then theoretically they all beat up on each other and it makes right. the divisions a little tighter New England, then if you have a couple runaway teams on the other side 
assholes maybe like you know after that you don't really put any playoff teams but on the right side you had academy you had us you had prices you had uh, bowling ball mafia you had uh, i think there was one or two more i think there was you had mass holes able uh, you had able. able like able equipment so there was um, like seven or eight you know playoff teams on one side but the three probably you know on paper the three biggest teams were on the left yeah. side but the rest of the playoff teams were all on the right side so i found that the right side was a lot harder than the left but. yes i would say in the grand scheme of things i don't think there's an easy match in this tournament oh, never never um and it really it really irritates the hell out of me when someone looks at a lineup or looks at the standings and on Monday night after the meeting and goes, Oh God, we got we got this. Oh, this will be an easy match. Oh, this will be No. Tournaments can be lost right there. Yep. There are no easy matches. Every single match is highly important. Every single string is highly important. But I I uh I don't know. I thought the, you know, my initial reaction was, oh shit. When I saw the, when I saw the, the draw, yeah. um, not because the three theoretically three best teams on paper were on one side. It was, I looked at, I looked at the fact that we were on this right side and I started looking down teams going, oh shit. Like this is going to be a dog fight from Tuesday morning to Friday afternoon. Yeah. Um, and and it was. Uh, it, it was, yeah. Yeah. Because it came down to the last match of who was going to get the bye. Yep. Came down to the last day of who was going to make the playoffs. So. Yeah, was it of... was. Uh, and you had a, you know, and then you throw a tie in there on the, on the, on the left the side. side. Yeah. Yeah. And they Apparently had tied in pinfall, but then after they checked it, no. Oof. Yeah, it was yeah, it was nuts. Um, yeah. you know the uh, I did not I so we bowled. Our match was against Maria's, um, which I yeah. I got to be honest, it's one of my favorite teams to bowl against. Uh, I I there is not one person on that team that I don't like or respect. Um. Except for Fuller, I think he. I'm just kidding, Fuller, because I know he's listening to this. And I told him I would mention that Brian guy. Fuller Jr. on our podcast. That yep. guy. I don't want uh, that guy. I, 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 I got the pleasure of bowling Fuller one string in our match. Did you beat him? I did, actually. Yes. So I wonder if they kicked him off already. <laughs> they should have. I beat him 109 Greg, one eight. Greg, are you listening to me? No, I'm just I it, being serious. So there, honestly, with that team, I I just have so much respect for every single one of them. I I find them to be, I find them to be the most competitive yet gentlemanly. They're consummate professionals. Yeah, at everything they do. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and our match came down to the last box, which is what you want in a match. Mm -hmm. Um, we were down. They went they went ballistic in the second string and threw a six seventy, six eighty at us. Um which was highly uncalled for. We <laughs> were having a friendly match up until that point. Um and then uh and then we started to bowl and you know, came down to um the last I mean the last two boxes, uh, Evan was bowling anchor. Um, I think we were down, it was 20 something. Um, he threw a spare in the ninth. He needed a double. There, there was no other way to do it. He had to have a double strike um, in the in the 10th box. Um, didn't throw the first one. Um, and it was uh, it was all over after that. But, you know, we made a comeback. And made it interesting. We went eighteen twenty and lost. So I we didn't lose, and that's what I tried to convey to the team is that we got beat. And that's that's a that's a different type of feeling than yeah. 
losing a match. Um, nothing you can do about getting beat. They bowled, no. they bowled great. They were 18, you know, 50, something like that, 1840, 1850, whatever it was. Um, you know, so I gave, I gave a run and, and unfortunately it wasn't, it wasn't enough to help the team spark the team. I had a spare in the eighth was sitting on a spare in the eighth. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris Harris comes up and throws a hammer hammer. No, nine pin drop and throws a nine pin drop. He's on the right. And when the ball left my hand for my, for my fill, I instantly thought I threw a strike. And then about halfway down, I went, Oh shit. Cause the ball actually started tailing in and I blew the guts out. I had, I had three and four. Uh, spread ego plus one and that was I'm not going to say it was all over after that he threw a strike on his fair and and I tried to match him and overthrew it plucked out the half Worcester left thought I made it instead I took out the one nine on my spare shot fun time good times good times good times yeah good times yeah you know but again they're just they just don't stop coming at you. Mm-hmm. You know, Craig turned back to time. Um, you know, Bobby Witt is Bobby Witt. <laughs> he would he went three ninety something. You know, I was wow. so he just he did was, Bobby Witt thing. He was three ninety something. I was three eighty five, three eighty three, three eighty six, somewhere in that mid three eighties, and Craig was three seventy three eighty. So the three old the three old guys, uh, you know. Yeah, well, that was the same with us when we bowled. Like, I, we're you know, of course, of course, you know, we were upset that we lost, but we threw seventeen ninety six. I mean, eighteen hundred something like that probably would have won six or eight points throughout the week. But we ran into a team that started out six forty. Then went 14 out of 20, I think, with marks with two sets of doubles. So we were down 102 <laughs> pins after four boxes in the second string. And they were open seven times. So yeah. it was just like, there's nothing you could do. We ended up coming back, only lost by 50 pins or 60 pins, I think. And so, whatever, I guess. We lost. It sucks, but. Well, yeah, awesome. it does suck. Bold, bold, awesome. But but you got beat. You didn't lose. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, um, and that's what I tried to tell it all. You know, and I can only speak for our team and I won't even speak for them as much as I will speak to them. And and whatnot is every single one of them. Bold their heart out and no one yeah. threw a pin away. No one. No one got pissed. No one got. Whatever. You know, there was some big shots. McGinty made some big shots. Daly made some big shots. Evan made some big shots. Like, it, every single person in, in our lineup did what we had to do. The guys on the bench did what they had to do. You know, everybody was cheering everybody on. And that's fun when that happens. You know, that's why we do it. That's why that's we that pull. It's about. You know, besides and, winning. Well, yeah, besides winning, we obviously we all want to win, but there can only be one winner and 23 different teams are going to lose. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. You ain't first, you're last. Yeah, yeah Ricky Bobby. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but I, 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 I made, you know, several comments during the week that I was that I hurt it. It physically hurts to bowl. Um, so when I talk about retirement, I'm, you know, I'm somewhat serious about it just because of what it takes for me to go through a tournament like this. Um, I am not making any decisions for those of you that um, think I'm full of shit. I'm not making any decisions at this point. I just need to know, do I need to find a sub the rest of the year on Thursday? No, 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 no. I'm bowling. I'll, I'll finish. I'm bowling league. I know. Uh, we I'll, should see if. I know November's like the thing. We should see if we could change it to like May or something where it's the end of the bowling season. Because now it's November and I'm like, what am I looking forward to now? Calvin, Calvin doesn't want to bowl the rest of the year now. 
Yeah. Like the big tournament's done. It's over. Yeah. You five, that one am I looking forward to? Five sixty. Ah, but that's Pacha. Two months. Pacha. I don't know. I'm kind of with yeah. Calvin on this. It's like you go you go mix worlds in June, you have the Can Am in June, you have Can Am in October, and the, you have the international mix doubles in August, and you have this in November. And then between And then there's nothing. Yeah. Like there's there's a lot of house tournaments and there's yep. the pro series and stuff like that, but there's no like five sixty in February. Well, I know, but it's not the same. It's five sixty. Yeah. It's not the same. No, everybody's every, nobody. It's not as competitive. That is okay. It doesn't carry it's, the same competitive it's, nature, but it's still it's a fun more, turn. It's it yes, it's a lot of fun and a lot of drunk and a lot of drunk fun. But and I mean, we found out this week that we're not allowed to have drunk fun at the world. So let's do so, this before we get into that, Calvin. I wasn't. I was getting into still going into the five sixty and talking. I know, about but stuff. I want to make sure we talk about the women because the women had their worlds this weekend. Yes, mm-hmm. So let's talk. Let's talk about the women in the women's worlds. And the women's can tournament. The women's ca- the sorry. Can-am. Yes, that's right. The women's worlds are typically in August. Well, ladies international. Do they have a women's worlds? No, I think I it's women's internationals. I think it's yeah. like Can Am internationals. It's not. It's not actually worlds. They don't call it worlds. They call it. I know there's the Can Am tournament and then the ladies international. Okay. Right. They don't have a world. I think it's internationals and then yes, what Brian said, Can Am. Okay. So. Talk amongst yourself for a quick step. I'm just bringing up the. Oh, I got the stats right here. Me too. So Team let's. Name. The winner. Let's congratulate undisputed. the undisputed. Undefeated. Almost. No, undefeated. they were they were defeated once. Uh, the ladies Can Am Championship uh, is team meeting slash team main. Um. I don't have the rosters, but I know that that Jill, was Tasha, uh, Jill, Shannon, Tasha, Amanda, Brooke, Amanda, Brooke, Melissa, Melissa, and Shannon. And Shannon. That's what I said, Shannon. I didn't hear you say Shannon. I know you were talking over me. No, you were talking over me. No, you were talking over me. Okay. No, maybe well, they, <laughs> they had a phenomenal uh, 28 and 2 record over the weekend. Did. So. Congratulations to Team Maine. Um, Charlie's Angels, second place. Congratulations to them. Uh, Maddie Kelly uh, was also the high average for the tournament. She was on uh, Charlie's Angels. Maddie was a uh, incredible 123.71 average for the tournament, um, which is phenomenal bowling. Yeah, great ball, for sure. Um, Able Equipment came in third, 24 and 6. She Unit, uh, fifth, 22 and 8. And the Deadwood Divas uh, round out your top five at 22 and 8. Um, this was held at the Bedford Sackville Super Bowl. I have never bowled there. Um, I don't Me know. Neither. I haven't either. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, at least I don't think so. I don't remember bowling there ever. Okay. So your tournament high averages, your top three women. We already said Maddie Kelly was uh, number one at one twenty three seven one. Kerrigan Skinner had a fantastic tournament, yeah, one seventeen point four three. Great go, Kerrigan. Uh, great job, yeah. Kerrigan. Kerrigan was on, uh, I believe, the high low dispensary with Renee Skinner, um, and and that group. So Kerrigan, great job. And Jill Wood was number three at one sixteen point six two. Um, Real good bowling. Oh, there's some. There, there yeah, was some great bowling. Yeah, there's some. There's the whole list too. Tasha was fourth. Brooke was fifth. Uh, Brenda Berry was sixth, and Narissa Crawford seventh. Amanda Carroll, Melissa Sinton, Debbie Purdy, and then Sonia Rossi. Those were the top ten. 
I was looking early on at the stats and the team stats, and it looked like the first two strings was it Laura and Trudy's girls had the worst draw. They had the highest pinfall, and they were 0-2 to start out of the gate. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Like, they had, like, their pinfall, they were well above everybody else and were 0-2. I, I, I wished – I would have liked to have seen some of the matches. Um, yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. I, I wish that they had someone that um, – record or go they live. They need a Paul Grant. <laughs> Yeah, no, I and I and I only say that and and look, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to call myself out here and and say, you know, those that how do I word this? No, we don't talk about the women's tournaments very much on our show. Reason for that is none of us are women. We don't I I don't go to the women's tournaments to see how things are. And that's all. And that's because when the women are bowling, we're typically bowling. Yes, that pretty much. And no Which one is unfortunate. Cause I would love to go. I'd, I'd go mm-hmm. sit and watch them all weekend. If I could, but... I would, I would yeah. now it would be tough for me to go to this one. Cause it's well, nine yeah. hours away. Yeah. Um, but I've gone to like, I went to the women's doubles at Exeter. That was fun. I, I enjoy watching good bowling. I don't care if it's if it's men or women. I just enjoy watching good bowling. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it's too bad that the women don't get the recognition that the men get when it comes to bowling. And yes, I'm saying that. And yes, I'm one of the ones that that recognize the men more than the women. And that's because I don't know. Maybe the men are more vain because they send us their information. Um, they want to be heard. <laughs> they want, you know, and I, I made that comment because um, a couple of the women down at the men's worlds, um, I'm not going to say it costed me because that sounds like they, you know, beat me up, pinned me down and forced they me. They let to, you know vocally they were unhappy at the company yes. they received. And my response was the same to anyone that said that. I said, did you send me any information? And they said, no. And I said, then how am I supposed to talk about it if I don't know about it? And they looked at me with these blank stare. And I said, two years, that two plus years that I've been doing this show, I have stated that if you want us to talk about your bowling or what's going on in the bowling world or the bowling community, you have to send it to us. Posting it on Candlepin Chat is great, but it get, it's it gets, going to get it buried. Lost. Yeah, mm-hmm. it gets lost. There's so many posts on there. So this was great. Kimba sent me this information uh, this morning. So I had it so we could talk about it. I would have loved to have seen Nerissa bowl her 160 something strength. Mm-hmm. That was fantastic. By the way, Nerissa, congratulations. That's a great strength. Very much. So. Um, would have loved to have seen that. Just like beat, beat my high string. Yeah, beat my high string. You know, just like I would have liked to have seen, you know, tonight, uh, D-Nice, uh, Denise went 398 in her league. I only know that because she posted it on uh, Facebook. Actually, no, she snapped Snapchat. it out. Yeah. She, so I saw it on Snapchat. I would have loved to see that. That's great bowling. But I, 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 I can't comment on, you know, how I'm I'm gonna pick on someone here real quick. Uh, I'm gonna pre- I'm gonna pick on Miranda Wallace. Miranda bowled great. She averaged 109 high sin- tournament high single 143. I would have loved to have seen that. I would have loved to have seen that 143. I bet it was a fun string to watch. But no one recorded it. No one live streamed it. Some of that's on the fact that this was in. Nova Scotia, this was in Halifax, and it's nine hours away from the States. But what's stopping people from doing what they're trying to do down here, up there? This is all it takes, folks, right here. You can do it with a phone. You set the phone up, you go live, and you can do it. Go Facebook Live. That's what we started doing. 
and then it's morphed into other things. You know, Bob Lee took it to the next level and Paul Grant's helped and, you know, Ali Chat's done their thing and so forth. But, you know, I would I would have loved to have seen Norris's 160. I would love to have seen the fact that Maddie Kelly averaged 123, almost 124 for the tournament and her high single was only 139. That's pretty steady. I mean, how consistent is that? You know, Kerrigan bowls all 14 string. Is it 14 string? Must have been 14, yeah, 14. strings. Yeah. Averages 117 and a half. Her high single was 143. So it's not like these ladies are doing this with 190s and follow mm. it up with a 90. They're being consistent with some good bowling. I don't know. I, I'm I'm gonna get off my soapbox now, but <laughs> I just I I I understand where the women are coming from when they get I, I don't know if upset, irritated, whatever, with the lack of coverage of their side of the sport. The focus is usually on the bigger names. No different on the men's side. The focus is usually on the bigger names. Yeah. For the most part. For the most part. But how cool was it to watch Sam Duguay throw his 192? Mm -hmm. That happened one lane over from me. I saw it. It was, oh my God. It was great. I think he did it on the video lanes, didn't he? No. Nope. We were on the video. We were on the video lanes when it happened. They were they were the next lane over to us. Yeah, I thought he did it because he was far over. I knew that. Yeah. Um. You know how cool I would have loved to have seen Charlie Collins, who's what? What is he? Twenty one. Is he twenty? Twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty two. Somewhere in there. Twenty one. Daily's age. He's young. He's Daily's age. I think. He's one of his good friends, but I would have loved to have seen Charlie throw his one sixty something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like just like Timmy Douglas, I would love to have seen Timmy throw his 194 in the in the uh, playoffs. Oh, you can see that. I think it was. I think that one was, was it. Three, yeah. Right? yeah. Was I think it? That one I don't was, know. I, I I I think that one was one of the ones that they recorded. Okay. I don't. Think I know I, he almost I, had a five bagger. I know he went strike, strike, nine pin drop, strike, strike. So. Yeah. I know we kind yeah. of got a little off topic there, but I know anyway. and a little bit and a little bit of it has to do with the Wi-Fi and stuff like that. Like it's hard to it's hard to as an alley have a big enough Wi-Fi span to keep up with 200 and some bowlers yep. trying to get on the Wi-Fi because they don't want to use their data. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's hard to kind of. Have that, I guess. Which has come to a little bit of a detriment to it. In the it is, but I also I worked for an Internet for a wireless internet company for a few years and Brian worked for a wireless internet company for a few more years than me. Um, I worked on the technical side. I know how to make all that Wi-Fi magic work. It's not as difficult as people think and it's actually not as expensive as people think. Would you say, Brian? No, I mean, there's a few devices out there, range extenders and whatnot that can help and can help carry a load. You can also... If you care enough, you can get a specialized router to help carry both commercial and customer traffic. There are ways. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's just to me, it's it. It is our way, it, or it is the 2022 way of promoting the game now is streaming. I, it would have been cool. Like I. I I looking down through these names of the of the women and you know I know obviously Maddie Kerrigan Jill Tasha Brooke I don't know Brenda Berry of She Unit I would have liked to have seen her bowl she averaged one thirteen she was top ten you know I know Narissa I don't know Debbie Purdy um you know there's there's women on here that I don't know who they are that would be cool to see them bowl. Yeah, and for them to get the exposure that they deserve. But yet for them to do that, they have to drive down here and make sure they're at a place where Paul Grant's going to be, which is, you know, unfortunate because he can't be everywhere at once. 
And that's me getting off. That's me getting off my soapbox. So congratulations. Congratulations, women. Uh, Mm -hmm. You guys did a fantastic job up in, uh, up in the Bedford uh, Sackville area. Uh, There was some great bowling. I know I saw, you know, some on Facebook as far as people talking about it. So I got some Snapchat pictures of scores and stuff, but Mm -hmm. nothing, nothing concrete or whatever, but. Uh, let's see what else we got. We want to, uh, Oh, Calvin, let's, let's end the show. Yeah, Not end, but let's, let's take a few minutes and let's, let's talk about, um, let's strap in everybody. Let's, let's strap let's, in let's, Calvin. The floor is yours. Let's, let's buckle your seat belts and get ready. Um, <clears throat> so let's, uh, set the stage. I should say. So we have a, a tradition uh, during our men's provincials is that Thursday is vodka Thursday. So you cannot drink beer. You cannot drink whatever you if you have a drink, it has to have vodka in it. So our team decided uh, white Russians was the choice of very Lebowski of you, the, the choice of the vodka Thursdays. Um, so. I should say that vodka Thursdays need to have limits. So as we do in provincials, you have your, you know, your regular drink, but you only buy a round for the team if somebody throws a double. And then somebody on the, you know, you go down a line, I guess. If that didn't happen, we had, uh, all right, here's the next round. Okay, who's got the next round? So it kind of got a little bit out of hand. We had two guys who one of them was in the trunk of a car and the other one was in a bush, probably throwing up. I don't know. Didn't really pay attention to him. So we had five guys in our lineup. One of them also being inebriated and couldn't even tie his own shoe, let alone bowl a, a match. But he did. He bowled every ball he threw. He he was there. Now, it doesn't go without uh, a little bit of, let's say, drunk smack talk and maybe some actions that were unnecessary but accidental. So... The if you know, you know. If you don't, don't even worry about it. If you really need to know, I will talk to you after. But I'm not going to use this to state any names. I'm not going to bash anybody. I'm just going to be spicy in the effect of what had happened. So one of the bowlers that we were bowling was taken out after four boxes. I believe it was four. He was not bowling well. He was injured. My inebriated teammate did not know he was injured. And they are, I believe, friends, you know, on and off the lanes. They're not, there's no ill will or anything towards each other. And my teammate jokingly, you know, goes to grab his leg and kind of lift him up and didn't realize that that was the injured leg that he had. And completely took him out of the match because he couldn't stand the pain, could not put pressure on his leg. Like he tweaked it a little bit the wrong way. Something happened. Something happened in that instance. So until maybe, I'd probably say like near the end of the third string, I had no idea that this happened. Somebody came and talked to me and said, don't know what happened, but I think your bowler hurt our bowler. I'm like, oh, okay. Nobody knew. Nobody saw it. All they knew was that their bowler was out in the out, outside, basically in tears because he couldn't put any pressure on his leg and whatnot. So we proceed to continue the match, and... Nobody's saying anything. Nobody's talking to me. 
Nobody's talking to our captain who was at the captain's meeting about it. Nobody was talking, nobody was saying anything. So we just went on. We ended up losing the second string by 14 pins, I think. And then we lost the third string because Mike, Gra- Mike Brown threw a, like, no doubt double. He threw the first one in the pocket and they just imploded. He threw the next one in the pocket and they imploded again. He threw a double to finish and we lost. We went. We split 4-4 with them because we won the first one by a lot. So the following morning, I see the captain of the team come over and say that they're filing a grievance against us. Now, I stood there and I, I, I was I was curious as to why. And he proceeded to tell me that our inebriated bowler injured their bowler. And I said, okay, well, that's fine. But your bowler was, for one, out of the match. He wasn't going back in. And I talked to your bowler this morning, and he said, there's no problem with that. I have no problem. He didn't know. It was just a joke. Like, he didn't just didn't know. He hit the wrong spot. And that's unfortunate. So the next point was during the match, as we were having fun, our team throughout the whole day was we had a saying was we were doing it for tips. So my bowler who was inebriated after I made a wicked cut shot said, show me your tip. So I proceeded to lift up my shirt and show him my tips. (laughs) Apparently, And I apologize to everyone at home if you were at all offended by that. But apparently I was very offensive. And me being a face of the tournament and a face of candle pin bowling should not be acting that way. Sir, let me tell you one thing. If you have been to a bowling alley or anywhere in your life, there are bare chested humans anywhere. If you think me lifting up my shirt for a matter of 10 seconds on a live feed is offensive to you, then you need to stay home, stay away from a bowling tournament because it's just going to happen. People are having fun. People are drunk. People are enjoying the week. We have now, now I don't know what they're going to be, but we have now been told that because of our actions, we have two new rules that are going to be implemented into the rule book about one, being penalized if your inebriation has gotten over the limit of being sportsmanlike, which I can understand to a point. Whose and, definition of sportsmanlike? Right. Exactly. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, you know, go along a, uh, a gray line here because is it sportsmanlike to take shots out of the gutter that were clearly in the gutter? Cause I have that. I'm not going to show it. Maybe I will if more people ask, but clearly in the gutter, whereas the ball ended up on the other side of the lane And there's no way that the ball ends up on the other side of the lane when you're hitting a pin that is stuck, or a wood, sorry, that is stuck to a pin. It's just not going to happen. Your ball is going to go straight back unless it goes in the gutter and fires all the way over to the other side. So what kind of sportsman like are we going to be talking about? That's that's a discussion I'd like to get Mm -hmm. in. You know what? If someone can remember this discussion, <laughs> our next podcast, let's talk sportsman like and what is, what isn't, so on and so forth. Because my version of sportsman like is going to be different than yours, Calvin. Yours yes. is going to be different than Brian's. Brian's is going to be different than mine. 
ours are going to be different than Joe blows down the street. And I'm going to just say like someone like Mark Carrier who owns a bowling alley is going to be different than mine. Who's a bowler. I I'm sorry, but there, how the fuck do you legislate? Right. right. What's sportsman like and what's not. Right. And I was then I was then proceeded to be told that I should have a better handle on my team. Are you telling me that you want me to tell a 35, 36, 37 and a 48 year old how to handle their liquor and how to. No, no, I'm not going to stand here and tell somebody, hey, I think you drank enough. They're old. They're responsible for their own liquor i'm not there to babysit somebody nor am i there to control my team i'm there to have a good time my team is there to have a good time we were short two bowlers technically three and even so three and a half because i was pretty well half cocked and i had smoked some today that day so we had about we were had three sober bowlers and you lost four points. What was your goal when you decided to call a grievance? Were you trying to steal two points? Like, were you trying to get pinfall because you couldn't beat three sober guys? Like, are you, what was your accomplishment? Let alone the fact that you did it after the fact, the next morning, and you weren't even there half the match. You have no idea what was going on the whole match. You're just hearing what everybody else is saying. So don't come at me and tell me to control my teammates. They're grown-ass men. This is a tournament with a lot of grown-ass men who are drinking. I know, uh, what was it, three or four years ago, we had guys falling over the ball racks. We had guys falling over the line because they were drunk. Did you... Did you have a problem with that? Probably not, because you were probably winning the string. You were upset. You lost four points to three drunk guys. Get over it. There's no need to be petty. There's no need to be, oh, you know, you took our guy out of the match. He was already out of the match. He wasn't going to bowl the rest of the night, and you know that. And it wasn't done maliciously, and it wasn't done no, with any malicious it intent. It there was no all. intent involved. It was... no. He was drunk. He was having fun. He just goes, hey, are you getting back in the line? And yep, just the way it goes. It's unfortunate. I apologized to the bowler the next day, and he said, wasn't a problem. It just, He didn't mean it. He hit it in the wrong spot. It, it's not. I, I feel great now. It, it was just at the time. It was a bad incident. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. So I can't wait to get go down this road in our next show i'm excited because um there was some there was some non sportsman like times things times things. yes things <laughs> you know uh you know i it's funny because one of them happened while i was bowling it was on the tv well called tv lanes so it's recorded and someone said that I was the immature one because I stopped halfway through my approach because the guy that I was bowling against yelled fuck really loud, not up at the line, but as they were walking back when I thought it was safe to go after they had missed a shot. So I got halfway through, I held up, walked back, put my ball down, reset myself, didn't say a word, picked up the ball, wiped it off, went and proceeded to make the shot. Got called immature, got called, uh, I can't believe that I would stop halfway through my approach over that, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, number one, say it to me. If you're going to say it, say it to me. I'm I'm, I'm a grown-ass man. You know, if you got a problem with me, say it to me. Number two, what are you doing about your teammate that's causing another bowler to stop? And And not for nothing, but how did that impact anything? Yeah. So it took an extra 15 seconds for me to throw make the ball. a shot, make a shot that I was going to make anyway. So, yeah. But anyway. Yeah, we'll get into it. 
We, we've gone way over. I um, want to mention one thing real quick, and it's uh, Tim Jalbert did hand out flyers at the end of the Worlds. Ooh, thank uh, you, Brian. The ICYBA Rock and Bowls at Academy Lanes on February 19th, 2023 at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. It is the biggest fundraiser they do do for the youth uh, trip, I believe, is to get the kids to go to Canada, and they bowl in the ICYBA tournament. Um, if, you're one of, if you're a pro and you want to participate, contact Tim Jalbert on Facebook. Let him know. Um, so get out there for the kids. They have a great job. There's going to be a lot of kids there. I know they said they had 80 kids in the program themselves and plus other alleys are coming as well. So get out there, help support the kids and get in contact with Tim Jalbert. If you want to, if you're a pro and you want to help out. Cool. Brian, thank you for bringing that up. We will mention that again. That will not be the only time we, we plug that. This is a really kind of a cool thing that, uh, they do. The kids for the, really look forward to it. Yeah. They have a good time. Yeah, Absolutely. it's really kind of a cool thing. So, uh, folks, please send us your, uh, you know, send us your questions, your comments. We're more than happy to read them on air. We're more than happy to answer questions. Um, you can reach us at ripping the rack podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at ripping the rack podcast. Uh, Brian and his dulcet tones will now inform us where else you can hear or see our show. Well, Tim, they can hear us at Anchor, Breaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever else you listen to your podcast mediums. Very nice, Brian. Very. Would you like to hear my disclaimer as well? Yes. Let's see the views disclaimer. and expressions of Tim, Calvin, and Brian are those of the Ripping the Rack podcast, and only those of Ripping the Rack podcast. They are for entertainment purposes only. And if you are offended, listen to something else. <laughs> okay. Love it. All right. Love it. On that note, folks, we appreciate it. And uh, we will see you guys soon. Peace.